Welcome again, everyone. Um, this is uh, pretty much the second last session for the search track for this year's Apache Con. Uh, and our ne next speaker, uh, or the speaker here, is a search and databases expert and Apache Lucid and Solar Committer and PMC member. He loves open source and has been an active member of the Lucid and Solar communities with focus around scalability and stability features in Solar. Today, he will be talking to us about features of resilience in uh, Apache Solar, how to use them, when to use them, and, and how they help scale a solar installation while keeping it stable. Uh, over to you, Atri. Thank you, Anjum. Hey, everybody. Uh, I'm Atri, as Anjum already kindly described. And today, we'll be going through a couple of features that are getting and have already been released in Solar 8X or are coming as uh, part of Solar 9 and also future planned work in the existing stream. Uh, so we'll be talking about you know, some of the things that we should be considering when using them, how to use them, how are they useful for us, and you know, basically what's coming in next. And of course, I'll be more than happy to talk about uh, contributions and help in that area because this definitely needs all the love that it can get. So without further ado, let's get started. A brief about me. I am a distinguished engineer at Securonix. Securonix is a SIM segment leader, and uh, we basically work with lots and lots of uh, event data. Uh, if you want to know more about what we do, uh, we are present at ApacheCon. We have a booth. Please drop in and, and feel free to say hi, or just ping me, and I'll be happy to chat. I'm an ASF member. I'm a Lucene and Solar PMC member. And I also wrote, wrote a book on uh, Lucene 8 called Practical Apache Lucene 8 published with the APRES last year. So, you know, what does this talk about? Again, uh, I'll not be taking a lot of time. There's more about, I just want to make the community aware of this specific track that is happening in solar, right? And Lucene, because uh, this has been something that has been discussed for a long time and we have made some progress in this direction, but now we have a full steam progress chart for the specific resilience track. And I want to make everybody aware of uh, these features so that they can use it and also you know, hopefully get some love back in the community. So we'll be focused on sustenance. So what exactly is sustenance, right? Uh, in my definition, sustenance is about when you run a solar cluster at scale, right? Uh, you run into different problems, right? Uh, you run into problems where uh, nodes bite more than they can chew. You have a lot of indexing and search requests. Uh, you have the same nodes uh, serving all your indexing quests as well as your search requests because you have the concept of, you know, for, especially for time series data, you have hot and warm collections and hot collections are the ones getting indexed and searched, warm collection only consuming disk or things like, you know, suddenly you have JVN spikes and, uh, you know, you have a lot of queries on a specific subcluster, the JVM reaches 99% and it goes out of memory. And you had queries which were running for like 45 minutes and they suddenly like the last mile they fail, right? Uh, you have cases where uh, you want to control how many search requests do you run at a specific point. Maybe your cluster is more, you know, either the uh, indexing is more important at that point of time, or you want to prioritize search at a given point of time. You have varying uh, production traffic workloads, and you want to, you know, emulate that into your search or in your request patterns. You know, that is a very common use case that people have. Uh, so, you know, then one thing that we will be talking about is the crucial ability to cancel queries, right? I fired a query by mistake. I wrote a wrong parameter, which will probably go around a million documents. I want to cancel it. Or maybe there's a long running query that I, it's not that high priority for me. I want to just cancel it out and do something shorter, right? All of those are abilities that allow us to sustain an existing solar cluster. So the objective of this track is basically make sure that a running solar cluster remains alive as much as possible, right? Even in the case, you know, in the face of a degrade service, the first prioritization is to keep your capacity up and running. So, you know, we will be talking about these three main features today. Uh, circuit breakers are already released as a part of uh, Solar 8.7. Uh, you know, we have people using it. We, as you know, at Securonix actively use this feature. Uh, at you know, and we are a very large deployment of uh, solar, so we actively use it for all of our customers, and uh, we are able to see a drastic improvement in the overall uh, stability uh, that our solar clusters have. 
Then we have rate limiters, which will be really the part of Solar 9. Again, something that is very crucial in terms of being able to dynamically define different quotas for different type of requests that are coming into your system, more independently search and indexing. And then we'll talk about task management, which is an elaborate feature which allows you to do a bunch of things, uh, giving visibility into uh, the active workload in your cluster, having the ability to manage it and basically uh, control the tasks that are actually running in your existing solar capacity. Then we will also go around uh, you know, some future work that is uh, stated to be done for these features and also some other uh, resiliency and sustenance features that have been actively worked on or planned to be worked on. They're almost like a, more like a wish list and you know any help on those will be very much appreciated. So circuit breakers, right? Um, why do we have circuit breakers? Circuit breakers are a very simple concept, right? So basically you have a lot of uh, different activities going on in a typical solar cluster. You have indexing, you have search, you have segment mergers and whatnot, right? Uh, a very common pattern seen for solar nodes is the fact that, you know, they keep accepting requests. So let's say I have an N number, so N node solar cluster. I can fire as many queries as I want, right? Solar will never say that, hey, you know, I'm not able to accept more queries. So I can fire as many queries as I want. I can fire as heavy queries as I want. And at some point, solar nodes will start going out of memory, right? Or they'll have so high a CPU that they simply cannot proceed. Uh, that point, I've basically lost some of my solar capacity. Along with that, I've lost all the requests that those nodes were processing, right? Uh, that can actually lead to a drastic impact on the overall quality of service that uh, you know, products using solar offer to their customers, right? Uh, I had a reporting query running 45 minutes. It, last minute, you know, it just went down because of some rogue bunch of queries that got accepted, right? Uh, so, or, you know, I have, a, I have a single query which basically needs a lot of JVM, a lot of juice, and I really don't want other queries to be coming in and disturbing that query, right? So that is like, you know, solar should be aware of how much it can bite and at in the move in the time of distress it should basically be ensuring that it is able to defend its capacity and do two things one not go down and be able to complete the uh, request that it has already accepted so that you know there's a much better customer response uh you know as i said we already talked about this so this is the primary reason why circuit breakers are an important feature to have in a system like solar. So circuit breakers are basically a very convenient way of defining what your uh, cluster's behavior should be in the in, in, in the face of duress, right? Right now, the default circuit breaker implementations are memory and load average CPU. Uh, circuit breaker pluggable, you can basically write your own by uh, you know implementing or overriding class called circuit breaker manager. Please refer your documentation for steps on that. Basically, you know, let's talk about a specific case of memory. You set a JVM percentage threshold saying that, okay, uh, and this is by the way, per collection, because, uh, you know, typically uh, in organizations using solar, each collection has different use case. So it's only fair that uh, each collection have the ability to define its own uh, threshold, right? So basically, let's say a lesser important collection can have a threshold of 60% of JVM and a higher importance can have 90%. So that what that ensures is that the lower, uh, well, let's say I hit a uh, JV utilization 65%, the lower threshold will, uh, collection will basically stop accepting requests, but it'll make room for the higher importance, higher priority collection. So the, you know, that those queries will still proceed. But when you hit 90%, uh, then even that will stop to ensure that your solar node does not go down. So you can have like per collection thresholds. And when the threshold is breached, then uh, on that specific collection, solar will stop, at least that node will stop accepting new requests. It will basically say that, you know, too, uh, too busy and we really, we really can't proceed at this point of time, right? So basically the idea is that uh, the customer should, and there's this whole exception that is raised. So the customer should be able to, or the user should be able to accept that, run into a loop, basically stall your query and try again. That is the expected behavior or the idle behavior that you should be doing with circuit breakers. Uh, the met, you know, when the metric goes down below the threshold, the circuit you know breakers are 
uh, close again and you can your queries can go back to normal. The metric calculation is time average. So, you know, let's say you have a second level burst in your JVM utilization that does not warrant a circuit breaker trigger, right? Uh, the way the metrics are looked at, they are, you look at a time average. So your uh, load or your metric needs to be exceeding the threshold for a specific percentage or in a specific amount of time in order to in order for the circuit breaker to trigger and then start this entire loop. How you really manage it is basically like in a, a new configuration in solar config XML. Uh, you know, you can basically uh, define this again, you know, as at the collection level, you define it in so you know this is the circuit break class is the default. You need to override if you want to, but uh, you, know, you say that mem enabled is the default memory circuit breaker. You specify it is enabled. Threshold is 80. When 80 signifies an 80 percent of uh, JVM is the threshold for this specific system. So what that means is that if you decide to scale up the node, uh, you know from let's say 60, you you give it more, you give the solar instance more. Uh, JVM from 64 GB to 56 GB, the threshold also automatically uh, scales up. You don't need to make any changes here because this is defined in percentage of the JVM allocated, not in absolute JVM terms. Similarly, for CPU, it's you know the 75 percent of CPU threshold. I remember that you know right now the uh, circuit breaker implementation uses load average, so it can also incorporate factors where some processor are waiting for this, but that is typically a rare scenario for some Linux distributions. Uh, then you know typically this is what you get when a uh, you know circuit breaker ex exception happens. So you can see the code is five zero three. You get a nice looking message saying that okay, this is an example of a JVM circuit breaker threshold trip, and you will say that okay, this is why the circuit breaker trip, and I really can't process this request. Uh, there are still some gotchas here. And for example, if you have one massive behemoth of a query, which independently can overrun your entire uh, JVM capacity, you know, in that scenario, what really will happen that beyond, let's say, the threshold, let's say you have 80% of JVM as a threshold, beyond that specific trigger, uh, no new queries will be accepted. But that single query, if it decides to go above 100%, then circuit breakers really can't do much about it. Although that is, you know, uh, uh, there is a circuit breaker currently in development which can take care of that uh, using a feature in Solar 9 called task management, which we'll be discussing here. But uh, and in the Solar 8 tech series, this is still something that is not uh, supported. So single queries can potentially still take the, down your node, but uh, yeah, no, that is kind of a corner scenario. And system metrics need to be correct, right? For any a calculation to be accurate or for any triggering to be correct, uh, your JVM needs to report its metrics correctly. Or you know, for your CPU needs to report its CPU, uh, CPU metrics correctly, you know, the works. Whatever metrics you're using have to be real time and be correct for this entire thing to work. Uh, let's quickly jump to our next one, which is the rate limiters. Uh, rate limiters uh, exist for a very specific reason, right? So typical solar clusters always have contention for resources between search requests and indexing requests, right? Um, so some clusters are more you know, index heavy than search or vice versa. And in, I mean, in the other scenario, you know, some clusters need to have a higher rate of indexing or a lower latency for indexing compared to search. In other types, you know, it is okay if your indexing takes a couple of milliseconds more, but you know, your search needs to be faster or your search needs to have a lower latency, right? Uh, so that's more of a business application uh, for your given solar cluster. And currently there's no way of modeling that in your overall search strategy inside solar. So rate limiters allow you to do that. Uh, rate limiters allow you to have dedicated quotas for each request type. Currently, the support is basically for query indexing uh, will come after the release of Solar 9. But uh, this is again extensible. You, you know, you can have uh, quotas for any kind of request that Solar identifies. And uh, just in addition, before this specific feature, uh, there was no way to identify different request types within Solar, right? But this feature also added uh, a component which allows you to 
identify what is the incoming request type you know is it like and also is it internal or external so going forward uh, we can have different type of quotas for any request that is acceptable to solar so you can have like a quota for let's say collection admin requests and what's and all, right um so basically you can say that okay let's i don't want more than 15 concurrent search requests to be running in, at a given point of time right and then that is like a guaranteed source so that has two things uh, at any point of time your search request will have a guaranteed slot count of 15 right but if uh, the other quotas are uh, let's say they don't don't have many tasks in queue and search quota has more requests to process then there is a concept of borrowing that we'll discuss so that is a feature that solar 9 is going to support and what it really does is you know the default is query rate limiting the idea is that you you limit your queries indexing alt automatic gets breathing room that's it. You know, once this, uh, when Solana is released, indexing uh, rate limiter will also be implemented. Uh, if your quota gets exceeded, you get back a 429, uh, similar to what you saw in circuit breakers. With the appropriateness is saying that, okay, you know, you exceeded your quota for this request type. And uh, as I just explained, if you have, if you specify it as 15 for search, 15 is the guaranteed slot count, right? Now, there's an interesting concept. Uh, rate limiters also support slot borrowing. What that really means is that, uh, let's say, you know, search quota has a 15 and the other, there's another quota which supports, let's say there's a collection admin quota which supports uh, a guarantee slot count of 10. Now that quota is hardly used. Maybe there are two or three requests and the other quota, you know, other slots are basically lying unused, whereas the search quota is under duress. So now what search quota will automatically do is if slot borrowing is enabled, it will go and ask for a slot from other available uh, quotas, right? And there are configurations to tune performance on this. But what this essentially allows you to do is borrow request slots from other quotas that have them lying free and then use them to process a request. Again, there are caveats there, you know, there are some uh, corner cases which uh, you should be aware of. But this is an experimental feature that's part of the first release. And as you know, we see feedback on that, we'll evolve the logic to be more refined. But this is something that exists as a part of uh, the main implementation today. How you really enable it is uh, it is dynamic. So you can change quotas without needing to restart your nodes. You know, you basically just fire a curl command of this type. You have a new command, which is called set rate limiter. Uh, you can see enabled is big true. It's a guarantee slots equal to five, uh, which is basically, this is for the default uh, rate limiter, which is the query rate limiter today. Uh, going forward, you know, you could basically have a new parameter for every different type of uh, rate limiter. And the allowed request is basically, you know, this is like the, the hard cap, right? You have a guarantee slots of five, but beyond 20, there should be absolutely no request. So you can think of these as soft watermark and hard watermark. And slot probably gets enabled and, uh, you know, slot, slot acquisition timeout is basically a tuning parameter, right? So you, when you are borrowing slots, you should no, never wait more than 70 milliseconds in order to uh, get a slot from uh, the quota. If you don't hear back in 70 seconds, you know, just 70 milliseconds, I'm sorry, you just proceed and say that, you know, there's no slot available and you, you give back a two-minute request. And you can, again, change this quota on the fly. Uh, so, you know, before we go get on to the, the last feature, uh, so there is, uh, you know, again, this feature has a lot of potential and we're just getting started here, right? So uh, as I said, there is a plethora of rate limiters that can be written here. And uh, one thing that I have, I have in my wish list, and I think uh, I even have a Jira for that. If not, I'll open one, is basically learn, you know, learning or taking active feedback from uh, the, you know, the request rejection rate into tuning your... Uh, you know, slot count. So what I really mean from that is that let's say if I have five quotas and three of them are heavily used and the two are not, right? And even in the face of slot borrowing, we should be able to dynamically adjust the quota sizes for all of those five quotas so that, you know, each quota has, um, you know, uh, an, uh, an average or a median of median size, which allows it to uh, support its, you know, its load parameter, load metric in the right way. So what I really mean is that if there is uh, a skew in the distribution of request loss between different quotas and, you know, given the 
production uh, feedback loop that is observed, the quota sizes should be auto-adjusted. So that is one thing that is definitely possible. There was a PLC done, it proves to be uh, working, but you know that needs a lot of work and love to actually make a reproduction. So that is on my wish list. Uh, if there's anybody who would love to help with that, you know, that will be great. Please reach out to me. The other is, again, I said, more rate limiters to be implemented. The third is slot borrowing, right? Slot borrowing is experimental right now. Uh, it works on pretty much state concepts of round robin requests, uh, you know, round, you know, basically a under duress quota sends round robin requests to all the other quotas. Uh, this should be more intelligent in terms of identifying which uh, quota is least used or you know, what are the metric spike metric metrics around different quota types so that you don't send requests to any quota that is, you know, it's ha has only one or two slots left. That is one thing. And the last thing that really is, uh, you know, really would make this feature even more powerful is aging, right? So the ability to identify, uh, you know, which, let's say right now we don't have any queuing mechanism. So if we decide to implement a queuing mechanism, that is one, and then you have different request aging types. So that allows you a higher control over uh, your rate limiter. So uh, that is a debatable topic because, uh, you know, ideally queuing should be done outside the system. But yes, that is something that, you know, would be useful. And aging would be useful even for the last feature that we're going to talk about, which is the task management. So yeah, you know, if, there's interest in further development or enhancement of this feature, please feel free to um, open a Jira or reach out to the community. You know, we'll be glad to help. Uh, the last feature for today is uh, task management. Task management is something, again, that is getting released as a part of uh, Solar 9. And why does it exist is this. Uh, basically, you know, one of the essential features that many users have been requesting over the years in solar is the ability to understand the current workload in the system, right? So many times what happens is that um, there is a JVM spike or there's an inherent slowness in your own overall system cluster and you don't know what's happening, right? You really want to understand what exactly is going on in my cluster right now. Like imagine like a PS minus all for your solar cluster, which doesn't exist today. And uh, many times, you know, customers or users basically want to control what's going on system, right? Maybe there are 10 queries running and that's slow. I know which three queries I can cancel. You know, maybe the latest queries, right? Uh, I can just uh, say, okay, cancel these three queries. And those star uh, queries should immediately be canceled, giving room for the re remaining seven queries to proceed. Or maybe there's a long running query that has been running for a long time and I really don't need the results for it now or I can do it as a bad job later, or I can run some other system, I don't care about it at all. You just cancel it, right? So that it frees up resources for the other ones. Or maybe you fired a query by mistake, right? A very common pattern that we see at Securonics is that our customers fire a query to get a, you know, fire a facet query, get the counts for uh, specific buckets, cancel the query. I mean, there's no cancellation, they just say cancel and we ignore that query. And, uh, you know, you basically, uh, go ahead and then file uh, an export query for those results, which basically file the same facet query again, right? So now they have two facet queries, one of which is redundant, right? So the ability to view your workload as well as control it has been something that users have been wanting for a long time and which is very essential for a dynamic system like solar, you know, which has different business priorities aligned to it. So that is why the task management uh, was invented. And we basically, you know, it solves all of these problems and builds a framework which allows users to um, build their own uh, task management handlers and define different ways of interacting with uh, the overall task management uh, interface, right? So this is basically what it supports. Currently, uh, the entire framework for supporting cancellation and tracking for any request type is supported. So uh, the default implementation works for queries because that was the most asked one. But uh, again, once this feature is released Solar 9, uh, there's already a patch for indexing that is being worked on and that will be released in the future release. And uh, this is best effort. So, you know, let's say the, because Solar queries are sent to multiple charts, all those charts which are hosting a query will be contacted and asked to cancel the query. 
in case uh, you know in some shards the query might have already finished then it's okay if not then the query will be cancelled right uh, so that is typically you know that's a set of features that the task manager interface exposes so currently for queries but the same interface exists for any other uh, request type that needs to be implemented so there are three typical uh, operations that the task management interface supports. Again, uh, this is an example of uh, all the running cancelable tasks. So you know I should be using the term trackable here. So when you fire a query, you basically mark it as trackable or not trackable, right? Sometimes you don't want a query to even show up in your workload and not, not be cancelable at all, right? So those, if you say that your query is not trackable, it will not be tracked, but uh, when you fire a query, you say, okay, track this one, you see this, you know, you, then you can use this command to uh, show you all the tasks or in this case queries that are currently running and are trackable. I forgot to add the parameter that you need to specify in your uh, query to make it trackable. Uh, you can actually look up the documentation for that. So this will basically, let's say, this is the kind of request that you'll see. You can see a new query UUID parameter that allows you to cancel it. And you know, there's a state version, which is the collection that it's running on. And then this was the parameters, you know, like the, the WT that it was actually running with. Again, this is a bit, it's formatted in not, not the right way because I don't, you know, I don't know how this thing to mess it up, but this is an example of what you'll see if you fire that specific query. Similarly, the next one is cancel an active, unable, you know, trackable task. Uh, you specify a query UUID, right? And uh, here's the interesting thing. You can actually specify your own query UUID when firing a trackable query, or you can just say that the query, query is trackable and the UUID is auto-generated and assigned to the query. So if you, you know, when you cancel a query, you need a query UUID. So you can either, if you have specified yourself, you can use that or you can list all the running tasks and then choose the query UID that you want to cancel and use it here. Either will work just fine. So here's an example of what you see, you know, with query with query ID 85 was canceled successfully. Now we have again, different examples, but excuse me. Uh, if you actually, you know, if none of the shards were seen having that query, then you actually get a message saying like that uh, the, the query was not found. But as a this best effort, so even if the query was canceled in some shards, you'll say that query ID 85 was canceled successfully. Uh, the last one is basically the state of a specific task. So maybe you don't want to get uh, the entire task list. You just want to look at a specific task your UID. In that scenario, you just say, you know, uh, list with the uh, specific task your UID and you will get a status back saying that this true, true is basically it's running, false is that it's not running. So again, this can be decorated a bit more, but uh, I was not sure what to add. So if you have any ideas on what other status can be added to a trackable task, please feel free to open a Jira because now that we have, see, this is the foundation, right? Now that we have the concept of trackable task in solar, that means we can collect a lot of metadata as we proceed ahead, right? So we can collect different metrics, different runtimes, maybe the average CPU utilization, average, uh, you know, memory utilization, if we had them in different processes, or there's a lot of things that we can track about a specific query or a task, right? And that can all be handled in a single singular point by the task handler. So now that we have this framework, I think there's a lot that can be done here uh, in terms of what metrics to see. So, you know, I expect this feature to uh, have more and more data collected as a part of the uh, list task or the task handler. So any ideas would be really welcome. And as I said, right, the, uh, yeah, before we get there, you know, again, this is also a foundation feature in terms that there is work that can be built on top of it. Uh, one thing that I've been working on is basically track the uh, incoming time of each query and then have a query type and have a request type which says that cancel all the last, uh, you know, the, the oldest end tasks or the latest end tasks, right? So. That will allow you to say that, okay, if, I, if a query, or let's say, um, basically, let's, I want to query all the tasks that are running more than or more than one hour, right? So that is something that will be supported. And that allows you to basically free up capacity based on time constraints. So maybe you don't query, care about a query that has been running for more than an hour. That's how you can just go ahead and cancel it uh, without even looking at it. So that's a bulk cancel. Or maybe you don't care about the latest 
uh, queries, the query that just started like you know, within the last 10 minutes. So that is already coming in, but you can have uh, aging here as well. You know, you can automatically cancel uh, queries uh, which are older than and then retry them, or you can age queries as they proceed. So there's, there's a lot that can be done here. And one thing that I mentioned earlier was, uh, you know, the fact that circuit break in circuit breakers today, a single query, a single large query can independently still go to 100%, and there's nothing we can do about it. Uh, that it is being uh, remedied by a new circuit breaker in Solar 9, which uses task you know, management. So what we do is we can we track the runtime of each query, and uh, you know basically when the uh, threshold for a circuit breaker exceeds, let's say for JVM exceeds 80% or 90%, whatever it is configured to. You, know, you define a cancellation policy. You say that okay, start killing the latest tasks, start killing the oldest tasks, and uh, the task management interface will be used to free up some capacity. So, circuit breakers today are reactive. Uh, you know, they basically are defense mechanism for preventing more queries from coming in. But uh, with the new dynamic circuit breaker using task management interface, uh, you know, we'll be able to dynamically free up capacity in case uh, in, there is an overload. So it will still block new queries at the same time it can kill existing queries to make up room and the cancellation or the elimination policy will be pluggable defined by the user so that is something very exciting that is coming in solar 9 uh, it is currently in the works uh, testing it as we speak and hopefully by the time solar 9 is released it will be already a part of it so you get it as a part of uh, solar 9.0 itself uh, one thing to remember here is that uh, you know these technologies or these features are not a replacement for your own monitoring. So in a typical solar production cluster, you should still be monitoring your world metrics. You should still be auto scaling up and down. You should be ensuring that you are rate limiting uh, your requests outside of solar, queuing them, and then using these features, you should be, you know, your application should be able to control its traffic. And, you know, when circuit breakers trigger, you should be able to auto scale up. And uh, you know when your rate limiters are rejecting queries, you should be able to queue them. You should be able to define an, a prioritization system for your queries and automatically cancel them. So a lot of you know, I think these features open up a plethora of avenues for um, users to use them and bake them into the core of your application that is interacting with Solar, so that you know the overall pipeline becomes very smooth and your application itself is able to become more resilient and interaction with Solar are more stable. So what's next, as I said, apart from all the exciting stuff that is coming in for these three features, there are two more features that are in pipeline. Uh, one is index size based collection rotation. You know, today we are able to rotate active collections based on number of documents and time. But sometimes, you know, in different EPS scenarios, that is not enough. So if you were able to rotate uh, collections based on index size, then that, that would be pretty useful for, at least for varying uh, events per second or in the you know request per second model uh, that is a task in itself because today you know in our collection rotation implementation we really don't maintain state of uh, you know mapping a collection to its alias we really have a like for time we have a formula that we use uh, this will have a state now and that is the, the implementation works so hopefully it will get part of solar 9 the bonus basically is something I'm not working on, but I really wish we had is the ability to drain nodes. You know, so let's say I want to downscale, I should be able to specify which nodes I you know want to decommission and then ensure that there's no replica being placed on that. So that is something I'd uh, you know I added as a wish list, and uh, hopefully somebody from the community will come and pick it up, and I'll have a PR to review in some time. So yeah, again. A lot of uh, uh, shout out for potential contributors to come in and help with this track. And these are only some thoughts, right? I think the sustenance and the self healing track is so wide and huge that there are ample opportunities for uh, new ideas and features here. So I, mean, I think this is also, an, you know, I want to take this opportunity to highlight this specific track to solar users and uh, enthusiasts and ask for more support in this area. You know, I think this is something that we really all should really be focusing on. And we are already focusing on it. But the more love we get here, the more hands we have, the more ideas we have, and the more, most important, the more user feedback we get here, uh, you know, the better. And it really will help push this entire 
traveling world. Actually, with the advent of Solar Nine, we'll have a different level of self healing and resilience that will make our uh, users' lives more easier. So I think uh, that's it. Thank you so much, and uh, I think I'll now take questions. Thank you so much, Atri. That was that was a great talk. Um, and we have a bunch of questions. So the first one is uh, David asked. Uh, you said circuit breakers are per collection, but shouldn't it be global for the machine since the machine is what is overloaded? Uh, that is a great question, David. Uh, ideally, yes. Uh, but you know, uh, the reason they are per collection is because, you know, as I said, collect different collections can have uh, different priorities. Uh, but the thing is, the metric that they're using is still global, right? So let's say you are, they're all collection of a single node. The thresholds are defined percentage of the JVM that the entire node is using. So the only different thing is uh, one collection might stop accepting requests at 90% of the JVM utilization. The other might stop accepting 60%. But they're still using the same underlying global metric. So that, I think, represents uh, a global... Uh, state of the overall affairs but yes uh, from a user perspective you know i think collection wise makes more sense just from a business application standpoint uh, the second question also from david only because i'm i'm going through the questions in the order they were received uh, not biased here uh, task management seems particularly well suited uh, to streaming expressions since they can in general be much longer running right so is this implemented or is this something that you've planned? Thank you for asking this. I already have a patch that I have not been able to bake as much as I would like. But yes, you're absolutely right. Streaming expressions are something that will absolutely benefit from this feature. And I've already done a patch which works very well. It just needs uh, you know, baking and testing. So um, again, this is on my radar for Solar 9. If not, it will definitely be a part of Solar 9.1. Great. Uh, then we have a question from Vivang. Um, the question is, when uh, when allocating quota for rate limit rate limiting, is there any consideration for solar internal load, such as a segment merge? Also, how does a long running request impact this quota, or does it? Uh, it does not. Basically, you know, you're still you so if your request is, you know, we have request timeouts, right? So. Basically, uh, if your request is running for a long time, it is still occupying a single slot in the quota, right? At some point, it should ideally be canceled by the uh, time limit that you set for it, and that point, its uh, slot will be free. In terms of uh, internal load, that's a great question. Right now, the way rate limiters work is that they do not uh, throttle uh, internal requests. So, you know, let's say uh, there's a shard that is sending internal query requests or internal segment merge requests, they will not be throttled because they are, you know, they need to proceed for the overall query. But new incoming requests are actually throttled today. So yes, we do consider the fact that internal requests will also create slots or will create requests. Okay. Um, actually, I'm gonna go out of the line and read out the question by Rahul first here. Uh, which is any particular reason circuit breakers are enabled only for searching, not indexing, particularly helpful in the case of long batch jobs since it's not uncommon to see high CPU or OMs during batch indexing? Uh, that's a great question again. I do have an implementation for indexing, which I did not raise at the first part PR because I wanted to be as non-controversial as possible. <laughs> you know, it was more of a political reason than anything else. Anshu knows that. He very gracefully uh, reviewed the PR. But yes, you're absolutely right. Now that we have seen uh, querying work well with rate limiters, uh, you know, Solar 11, 8.11, or the next release, post the current one, will have indexing as well. I actually plan to raise a pull request band of next week, which will start uh, circuit breakers for indexing. OK, then we have a question from Lamin. Uh, that is, regarding the circuit breaker, if the threshold is reached in a node and the node stops accepting requests, but still other nodes have more room, would the whole request fail or would it just be forwarded internally to another node? Uh, is there any auto forwarding? There is no auto forwarding yet because uh, you know you need to you can only forward a request to a replica of that node, right? And uh, it is a given and take because now if you are actually forwarding a request in real time, then you need to get the state from Zookeeper to say which nodes have shards, uh, you know, replicas for this shard and then forward to them. 
it is a cool feature which it is not supported yet what will really happen is that let's say uh, you have five shards on five different nodes and let's say one shard is under duress and it rejects the request but the other four still have room so they will process the request and you will get partial results back so solar has this feature called uh, partial frag is equal to true which is uh, return in case of some shards not giving results but some other shards still processing the request so you will get a result uh, you will get a response back with a flag saying you know partial results and then it will have the results from all the shards that were able to process the request uh, i think forwarding is a cool idea uh, it just needs to be done in a performant manner so that the zookeeper interactions don't really create a huge latency gap uh, but you know I, i would be more than happy to discuss this and actually create a design that works because i think it's it is a cool feature to have okay and then the last question is can circuit breakers or rate limiting or task manager be extended to non query indexing tasks example admin or metrics if a scraping request is slow running probably due to other processes can it be throttled absolutely i think uh, thank you for asking this chris uh, all of these uh, systems are written in a way to be very pluggable in fact i did uh, you know just to prove this point i actually did a poc of uh, rate limiters actually having a quota for admin breakers i think i mentioned in the talk, uh, talk as well i just didn't add it because you know that was not the burning uh, problem right mostly people don't have a admin uh, request over you know they taking over their cluster but yes it is absolutely possible uh, it is actually pretty easy to do that uh, because the request type already exists you just need to read that in your uh, rate limiter excuse me and define your quota so yes it is doable it has been tried out all of these three interfaces can support uh, non query and indexing type now as i said any request type in solar can be handled by these three interfaces okay uh... we're running out of time i'm going to quickly take this probably give you 20 seconds to answer this if you can for rate limiters what are the slot counts based on how do you determine the required slots for your setup uh right now it's static as i said uh, there is no way to really be determining uh, you know how how to size those slots i mean at you know at work we have a sheet which we use to map our uh, slot count to our capacity but uh, right now it's purely static you learn that's why it's dynamic right as you you put up some default values you see your feedback you tune them and you don't need to restart so you can just keep call, uh, firing call commands but one thing i did have a shout out for is help on some ml m experts you know from some ml experts who can help me uh, derive a model which can learn from active feedback because it's a very powerful tool we have active uh, feedback from the current slot count that we see in production right and every system has that so if you can use that active feedback to tune those slot counts more that would be great but that is something you know that that will, uh, will require some help okay uh, so we're all we're over stressed on time here uh, and i need to rush to a talk that i need to be at uh, thank you so much atri this was great and uh, as atri said hope to see more community participation around this um, and uh, just to let everyone know the last talk for the search track is coming up next uh, it's it's a panel discussion that where we're going to discuss how security vulnerabilities are reported addressed and handled by the apache solar pmc what's the process like what's the right way to move forward with it how do you keep track of it and a lot of other things that that, that are still open for discussion so come over and participate in that discussion uh, that starts in about 6 uh, minutes from now Thanks Adri. Thank you. Thank you.